questions? You mentioned about um, liturgical uh, versus evangelical, and so can you explain why exactly why the evangelicals would be disqualified from being chaplains? Okay, so liturgical needs means that the faith practice requires specific actions that have to be gone through for a person. I'm, I'm trying to put it in layman terms. For you to go to heaven, you need to do X, Y, and Z. So if you're a Catholic and you don't take communion and you don't have confession, you don't go to heaven. If you're a Sikh and you don't have a knife and you don't do certain kind of things, you can't be go to the hereafter. It's just what it is. If you're a Jew and you don't do certain things and observe certain kind of things, God isn't going to accept you. Those are liturgical needs. Evangelical Christians don't have any liturgical needs. They have one. They have to have access to a Bible. That's it. But they have no liturgical need anywhere in evangelical Christianity where the Bible says, or any other authority says, in order to be a Protestant Christian, in order to be saved, you have to have a minister who speaks between you and God. Nothing like that. And they don't have to drink out of a chalice, they don't have to burn candles, they don't have to have incense, they don't have to cast a circle. They could sit at home and read their Bible and they've met all of their needs. There are certain liturgical Protestant things, like a Lutherans, for example. So, and, and I believe also Episcopalians are like that. You know, they have some of the same requirements they have like in Catholicism. So for them to actually be saved or go to heaven or whatever is they do have to take the Eucharist or do certain kind of things. And that can't be given by just anyone. It has to be given by a particular person who is a priest or whatever. Which brings up one thing I left out. While the California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation has made the argument that the pagans cannot be chaplains because they don't meet the liturgical, they, they, ha, don't, they don't have liturgical needs and that only faiths that have liturgical needs can be hired and the only chaplains that can be hired are ones that can meet the liturgical needs. In the California Department of Corrections they have a number of Catholic chaplains that are not priests. So those Catholic chaplains can't give communion nor last rites or anything. So how is it that they're in there? It's like when it applies to us, it's one way. When it applies to them, it's a different way. And there are a number of Christians who are in there working at chaplains who have not met the criteria even for Protestant Christianity. There's one other way that the CDCR, this didn't come out in the case, but that they discriminated against me that I think is also important. When I was battling trying to make it forward through the whole issue whether there's, there's discrimination against pagans or not in the system, I decided to take a different tact. I decided, well, if I can't be a chaplain, but I want to have an effect on the religion programs, then I'm going to apply for a job to be the person in charge of the religion programs so that I'm the guy who's making the decisions, right? So I go look into it and say, oh, well, you can't do that. You have to take a state exam and you have to be a score on a list and, yet, and they only hire an interview according to how high you're on the list and you have to get a certain score and they give certain kudos to people who already work for the system. So you're never going to make it. But that's what the system is. So I applied, took the exam and scored top of the state. They refuse to interview me for the position, even though the law says that I am the only guy they can interview. So that's a secondary thing, which then I thought, well, maybe I ought to file a lawsuit about that again, but already I've been seven years in this lawsuit. What's the point? It's obvious as a pagan, even though I met all their qualifications and scored the highest on the state exam, and that the law says I have to be the guy that gets the job, they refuse to even interview me. So it just makes it real plain that it isn't about the five phase, it isn't about all this other crap, it's about straight discrimination, and I think that's the end. Basic, I'm gonna make a statement you can react to how, however you want, but basically if everything stood still today, and if everything stood as it is, we're now in a situation where 
these private companies can basically take over the chaplain program, whether by taking over the entire prison or by taking over just the chaplaincy program. And now with the ruling from the Ninth Circuit, they can now legally not hire pagans. And that is the big hammer here. So, we have a really big story in that the governments are tending to give the whole religion ball of wax to these evangelical organizations and the private prisons, which are run by evangelical organizations, and they have now given them law saying they don't hire, have to hire anybody, but whoever they put in their employment description, and that whoever they put in their employment description, that they are not discriminating as long as they put what their criteria is and you don't meet it. So if they put, we now hire chaplains, if you have to have been saved, and you have to belong to X church, then if you come, no matter what religion or what difference you are to apply for that job, they can say, nope, we aren't giving you an application because you don't meet this criteria and the Ninth Circuit just ruled that we don't have to consider you. It's a pretty big deal. Okay? Thank you. Thank you very much.